So welcome to another war game review from theplayersaid.com. My name's Alexander. And I'm Grant. And today we're taking a look at a brand new game from Compass Games called Dawn's Early Light, The War of 1812. Uh, this is a two-player card-driven war game. Mm -hmm. uh, it is touted as being fairly, or well, not very complex. Right? I think it's four out of ten. Yeah. With it, the complexity. It, it's, it's so it's not totally simple, but it's... Middle, middle no, of the pack. But you could play this as your first war game. Not oh, yeah. Deal, right? This is Absolutely. It's not a complicated game. Yeah. Um, it's designed by... David McDonough? David McDonough? Is that what it was? I think it was. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we even just read it. We just read it, yeah. Uh, I knew I was going to do that. So, And this was a Kickstarter. Yes. They initially, I think, pre-ordered, like, posted it on their, their website, and it was a pre-order, order, and then they decided to stick it on Kickstarter. Kickstart it. And I think they may have done that because they wanted to raise funds, because this is a fully mounted map. Yeah, the map is really nice. We the, talked about that was that yes. was obviously the, the best component. But, uh, yeah, it's, you know, it's big deck of cards. You're going to go mm -hmm. through the counters are pre-rounded. Very and, nice, yeah. When they're punched Simple, well. but nice counters. So it is a nice quality game as mm -hmm. well. You get good components from it. Although we had a nice discussion about what are all these lines? <laughs> you, you know, we, we can we can see some of them are like territories, and we think some of them are roads. Like this is a road. It's got it's got to be a road. Or, or, this has got to be a road. I don't. But it's just unclear. I don't know enough. It's just unclear. About the backgroundy stuff. Yeah, th this looks like the North Carolina. But it anyway. goes off into oblivion. Yeah, it's it's kind of, you know, here's another road. There's just no... So I'd like to know what that is. Maybe I need to do a little research Maybe. on that. But but it's, yeah. Anyway. Uh, generally speaking, it's actually a really nice map. Very nice. nice. Board. They've got nice uh, it's big. typeface on it as well to make it look yeah. a little bit flavorful and historical. There's ni nice embellishments yep. on some of the boxes and things like that. It's really big. I mean, yeah. you can have 10 counters in here and you, you've got space for another 10. And that's a, a big part of this. It's not an area movement game strictly from like that standpoint. Like yeah. But it is a it is a dudes on a map moving around mm -hmm. into big areas. So there's no hexes. It's not point to point or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's large regions. So it... it behooves the game to, to look nice and it does yeah they did a good job with the map uh, but the game what two it's so the back of the box is two three hours gameplay first time it's going to be three hours because yep. you got to read the cards there's a lot of cards yes. they have a lot of ab abilities but once you start getting into it the turns go through pretty quickly yep uh i, I by the sixth and seventh turn we were rolling through them pretty quickly yeah my <laughs> I felt like the sixth turn was really slow for me because it was such a painful hand to play. You had to think I was, about... I was really concentrating on what I was trying to do. So it kind of slowed yeah. it down a bit. But that's that's me. You can get into mm -hmm. a little bit of analysis paralysis in that way, but it's yeah, you know, it's rare. My, all, all of my other hands were... It was fairly obvious yeah. what I should play when well, and what and, I should do. And maybe we should clarify. I think a majority of that analysis paralysis is you really don't have a lot of different actions. Yeah. You have... And actually, it's very asymmetric. You know, you have four or five actions. I have four or five actions. Some of them are very comparable, but some are not. Yes. But the, the analysis paralysis comes in when you're viewing the cards, when they are played and they have your enemy's flag on them, yep. the event goes off. Yes. You use the op points, one to four, and the event goes off for them. So you're looking at your hand trying to understand, okay... How can I not make some of these go off by taking this territory or killing this stack or yeah, how do controlling I, this? How do I minimize this bad stuff? It's yeah. damage limitation. Yeah. That's, and that, so that's the stuff that does slow me down. Yeah, so you have to think about it. If I got a really order. bad hand, it's like, oh, okay, I better do this yeah. and then not do this and not do this yeah. and not do this. So I feel like that the analysis really is that, and I really like that. I do like that about card-driven yes. games. To me, a CDG that the events don't go off. Uh, when you play an opponent's card, usually I think fairly it's fairly boring. I think it's a missed opportunity too. Um, the other interesting thing, though, is man, a lot of those events that go off for you, uh, you know, when your enemy plays you, they can really change what you do. Oh yeah, some of them are very powerful, and and that's, like extremely powerful. That's one thing I love about this game is when I have a card and it has your event on it, mm -hmm. I'm going to play it for the ops, and I get to do my ops. But I also get to choose when when the event goes off, yep. either before I do my ops or after I do yep. my ops. So if I'm just going to do something like, oh, I'm going to do some recruiting, no big deal, I might do that before. Yep. Or I can see what you're going to do with the event, 
and then spin my ops on something different it. to react yep. to it. Or so that is that. that is very cool because some of those yeah. card driven games, it's like the event goes off first. Yes, this you get to choose. The player who played the card gets to choose. Yeah, okay. they get to choose one. And I like uh, that, that's cool. That little extra layer of decision is something I appreciate in a game. Yep. Uh, so you know, it, and it's subtle little layers like that that can elevate yeah. this from being a fairly simple introductory game mm -hmm. to there's a little bit of bite in the, in some of the choices you got to make. Well, and and the the strategy, understanding your strategy, executing that strategy and then being flexible because some things don't go the way you planned obviously. <laughs> yeah. Some <laughs> things don't happen in the order you wanted them to happen. There there are those subtle choices there that really can change the way the game is yeah. played. We you know, first time we played this I, I we talked about it. I, I want to play it again. I think yes. we'll play it now in in probably two hours uh, because we yes we it understand would be much it. quicker the next time. Yeah, I, I as the Americans would like to play things completely differently. <laughs> um, ended up losing. You were up at what seventeen victory points. Yep. Not a not an auto victory, but a, a victory yes. nonetheless, <laughs> close as you can get. <laughs> at one point, the, I think I had what four or five, maybe six victory yeah. points. Um, I was rolling at that point, and then I just had a really, really well, bad run. Bad run of cards, bad run of dice. Yeah. Because yeah. combat in this so one funny. is... Uh, Simultaneous. It, yes, and it's not a bucket of dice, but you'll, you'll roll anywhere from two to six dice, typically. Yeah. And regulars will be destroyed on a six. It's quite yeah. rare. Militia are destroyed on a five or more. Indians on a Indians four. Indians on a four or more. Uh, so you, if you get into, like really heavy battles with lots of regulars and something yeah, doesn't go your sixes. way. Yeah. You know, if one side gets wiped, not only is that like, you, you know, you've lost that battle, you're going to probably lose some victory points yeah. over some territory. But the time it takes card wise to have raised those oh. and the ops and the recruit markers it's taken to get those and to campaign to get the them. The movement oh. is because a campaign is it's it's one movement. Yep. And typically they're cities, you know, you can see their cities on the map. That's where you recruit your guys. You then move out into the country in your own territory. Yeah. That's your entire campaign. Yeah. You can't then take another campaign action with that same stack of guys. You have to do it with another stack. So, it's always a 2 to 3 not turn but cards. You could yes. do it with two to three layers of played cards. That's a big investment. Yeah, but you they, get wiped. they must move some guys out, some other guys yeah. move uh, it's, it's And then you get wiped out in these really big battles, and it's like, oh, that's going to take me an entire turn to get yeah. those guys raised and then get back out there. And it, 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 Yeah, so combat can be, it's dice rolling, right? Yeah. But, you know, you, you really want to pick your battles where you can. Yeah. This is a game... Uh, more than a lot of others, where you you do have to pick your battles. Yes, you you can't do willy things nilly. totally willy nilly. It, yeah, it, because you could end up totally hosing yourself. Yep, and it was very interesting. The 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 narrative of the course of this game that we played was, <clears throat> I felt like we spent a lot of time building up, and then there was a bit of action, and then we built up again. Yeah, and then like everyone died. Yep. In one turn, we literally had like seven battles. And everyone came. Everyone died. And almost everything was everyone's dead. Yeah. And it, it was And there crazy. was like four units on the board yep. total. And yep. then, so there was just, okay, raise more guys as quickly as possible yep. and get back out there. Yep. Which is just, it, it, it was fascinating to see the arc of this game do that. Yeah. I uh, just, I don't know. I don't know if I've played a lot of games that, that are cool, <laughs> where it's quite that evident yeah. about what's going on and how time plays into how you conduct a war during this period. Yeah. yeah so that was neat. And, and, I, and I think that, that, was a, that was one thing I liked about it. It did, did feel very thematic. You were reliant on your, your ocean and naval power. Yep. Uh, these control of these lakes, you know, the Great Lakes. The War of 1812 was fought a lot in the, basically, Michigan, Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania, uh, along the Great Lakes. Yes. And that was key. Um I probably made some mistakes in not pushing that a little further because it was interesting that turn you were referencing where I I kind of took over several Kingston and I think Montreal. I only had one guy in each place and then 
I just wiped them. You, yeah. Well, you you raised some guys in Halifax, and you moved all the way down the St. Lawrence River and down, and it's like, oh, yeah, that's why I should have probably cut this, uh, control that lake, and and those are things that I think once again next time, the, it, we're gonna fight a little harder over some of that stuff. Yeah, and that that's cool. Um, I also appreciate the the map design from that standpoint mm -hmm. because. The the Hudson region and the uh, Penobs Penobscot, Penobscot th there's one region between New York and Kingston and Boston and Montreal, mm -hmm. which it focuses the fighting where yeah. historically a lot of it happened as well. Yeah, and, and it's neat that you know it was a really easy way to do that, but uh, again, it's something that I may not have noticed in other games. But this one, I'm like, we yeah. fought. And we did things that historically happened. Yeah. And when a game does that, to me, I know very little. I have very mm -hmm. little knowledge of War of eighteen twelve. Yeah. My knowledge. Of I have. I have a little more than you, yeah. but but I don't know that it's a history I've studied a lot. But of. the broad knowledge I have is to do with places more than anything. Mm. And our fighting and our campaigning happened in those regions. Yeah. That's decent game design to me. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We weren't doing other crazy stuff. Yep. Necessarily, or yep. as much as it was. Uh, well, that, that's why, like, we, we talk, the board is so big, there's some kind of far remote areas up there that nothing ever really happens. Yes. You, you know. But you could make you it could. happen if you wanted to. to. To mess with, if things are going really well for you, you might want to do that to, to start having you think of something different. Yeah, send in some harrying forces out yeah. up in Huron and northern Canada. But they're not like worth that. anything. That it's The, the worth for those yeah. is the presence. Is the distraction for yep. me, yeah. Yep. Just like down here... You know, you, you had a guy, a, a regular in your uh, landing force. And that makes you think about, uh-oh. Yep, it took an entire card for me to restock all of my city so that you couldn't just walk in there. Yes. And and that would, mission accomplished. Yes. You accomplished that. Yes. The other thing that the Naval Theater, very fascinating. Yeah, um, totally asymmetrical. Very asymmetrical. You are trying to get blockade points. By controlling these boxes, the Southern Coast Blockade, Chesapeake, and the New England Blockade, you've got to move your, your squadrons um, amongst those, and when you fill them up, that gets you victory points. Yes. Well, conversely, I'm trying to do privateering, getting, you know, getting my ships out to take some of your merchants and pick off a squadron here or there. And that takes victory points away from you. Yes. Um, but or I, you can send out your cruises to, yep, to do, harry you. really do fights and remove them from yep. my blockades. So that was interesting, a back and forth. I, I felt like it really distracted me from what I was supposed to be doing. I think I have a strategy now that I would do... Because really, with some of those abilities I got, I was going to roll five to six, uh, six dice and score a, a, a success on two... I would have probably done that one time. Yeah, you just do it. Pfft, don't and do I'm up at three or four. And you know what? If you get a victory point from that, that's okay. You know, I, I was really worried about trying to get victory points from this. And that's a mistake. I really feel like that's a mistake. Leveling it out, that's what you should be doing. Yeah. I should have been focused on getting my VPs from Kingston, Montreal, uh, Niagara, yeah. Fort Dearborn. I think and, for, the, for the U.S., taking territory... Yeah. Is key and p potentially diplomacy. Yep. If then the naval theater, all you're doing is to try to not lose that. Yeah, not necessarily have to yeah, win it. Not win it, not lose it. Yeah, and that's what I mean. I focus too much on it. Yeah, whereas for the for the Brits, sure, I can I can send out the blockades decently. You've got to commit yeah. some points to it, but I can do that. But it's I feel like it's. I felt like it was much easier for for me as the British player to take territory off of you. Yeah, yeah. There was, you know, you have a concentration of guys in all of these cities on the eastern seaboard and in the surrounding regions, but I can harry with Indians from the Indian territories from the Shawnee and Cherokee. I can also march down uh, from Montreal. Uh, and, and, and I don't know. It, I felt like... I had good access to points. Yeah. I just had to commit resources to raising enough guys and, and getting them down there yeah. and, and doing it. Well, let's talk about those Indians really quickly. They had some really cool abilities. Uh, yes. One, they could raid yes. uh, my my controlled areas. That's kind of risky. you got to roll a bunch of dice, and you're only going to succeed on sixes. 
right? Wasn't it sixes? Five, five, five plus. Fives five and plus. sixes. So that, that, you know, you roll three, four dice because you have three or four units there. You might get one, you're going to get a victory point. But what's the penalty? Is that all, they all go away out of the game. Yeah. They, they, Which sucks. They left. They went back home. They, they got some booty and some spoil and they went home. To kind of lick their wounds, but but raising Indians is not something you can proactively do throughout right. the majority of the game. The Indians come onto the board usually Via from, from card effects and events yeah. until you get the Creek Rebellion. Then you can start recruiting. Yes, which I'm not sure you ever <laughs> recruited. I never needed to. <laughs> yeah, because you kept getting. Yeah, the cards would give me enough. Yeah. I'm like, I don't need to spend. It was more important for me to get the regulars and militias up north because you had. Uh, um, yeah. combats were just killing each other. Yeah, yeah. But I also like that they could retreat. Yeah, if they're uh, in their own areas, yep. they can try to evade. Yep. If they die, you roll a die on a four plus. They just they run to they the next go to a different area. They didn't die. And was, how, well, that was very frustrating. I wanted to grab those counters <laughs> and rip them in half. Um, <laughs> Early game, that was very powerful. Yeah, actually. it kept mine on the board a long yep. time. And when you attack with them, you don't get that. No, but so, then you get to come say comes out, and you get an extra die. And he, when so you know you get an extra die in attack with your Indians. So I'm all like, yeah, oh, great. Now I'm I've got attack. a stack of two Indians here and one down there. You just like screw it. I'll, yeah. I get a couple of dice here and there, and they're just a harrying force. Yep. And that stuff was really really nice. The extra little chrome from yeah. the from these active game markers are pretty cool. It was nice. I, I would have liked to have seen a few more of those. I, I and and also, I, I don't know. I would have liked to have seen a few more because I thought they were very cool. Yeah. I don't know if you have too many. It starts to become it too, too many much. things to remember maybe. Yeah. But it was neat. We had four. I think there's like six, six or in the game. Maybe. Six or seven. But the, yeah. the, the neat little game effects. They I, just add bonuses or detract from yeah, things. Yeah. The one thing I wish is that the play aids had those listed on them. Yeah. Because you, you or put the mark it out. has said... You know, yeah, plus one to Indian attacks. It just has the yeah. name on them, and then you got to reference the rule book for what they do. Yeah, that that to me would have been a very you, simple. You remember one. after a while, but you yeah, got, you got to, you know, you got space on that play aid. Well, right. and, and I'm going to be honest, <laughs> you actually have space on this board. That's true. You can just put on the board. make that a bigger box. Have them be a holding box where you actually put each piece yeah. in a certain yeah. area, and it says plus one on Indian dice on attack, or it says whatever the Creek Civil War was. Um, yeah, yeah, anyway. Yeah, I can recruit one at no cost yeah, yeah. to Creek. The, the other thing that was really cool, we didn't talk about this, um, the public policy. Yeah, the, pub, the public chart. opinion. Yeah, the public policy stuff is fun. And I think yeah. a lot of CDGs have something like this. It's mm -hmm. not actually mechanically like this, but you have this extra little sideshow. Yeah. And the sideshow in this one is. Like the space race in Twilight Struggle. Yeah, and... ev every so often. Uh, at set points of the game, or a couple of events, yeah. you can move one of three tracks, mm -hmm. and those tracks give you very distinct um, capabilities. Yep. You might have plus one to your recruit action on any card that you're playing. Yeah. Uh, or it might be just get a VP at the end of every turn. Yeah. Or And as you go up get on these tracks, card. they get better and better yep. and better. So you're trying to match these with your strategy, yeah. and then build those up, for instance, I felt like my strategy was attack and campaign, you know, campaign and recruit, and I got those ones that gave me plus one additional, and that really helped. Yeah, it makes your ops cards better. Yeah, because right? I could use a one op card and do two things. Yes, that was nice. Yeah, you focused on the diplomacy, which ultimately in the end gave you. We we had calculated somewhere between six and eight. Yeah, over victory the, over points the over the course of the game. Of the game. A, a big net gain for And me. getting that extra card, I think you had it for three rounds, twice, maybe? Twice, twice. Twice. Yeah, that's big. That's big. Um, very interesting part of the game. I, I enjoyed that. I think now I would play that a little differently. Yeah, it's it's interesting because it's, it, it's hard to affect that. Yes, A lot it of is. it's done in the prelude phase, right yes. at the beginning. You, you kind of say, boom, this is what I'm going to go for. Yep. And you adjust it incrementally at a couple points during the yep. game. And you might get a really lucky card that's like, oh, hey, plus one to this. Yeah. Or and, and, or there were a couple that was negative two yeah. to, to your opponent. Or I had one that was, um, you transfer Re one from me to you. you get, yeah. or, or there was a British one that was reduce one. Yeah. E every track one. That was, that's I had that card when you had given up <laughs> on public opinion. So 
I, I couldn't reduce you any further than zero, yeah. so I couldn't use that. But very neat part of the game. I thought that was well integrated. Yeah, it, it, and it, it felt like a sideshow, but it also integrated into the gameplay and I made like it interesting. I like those things, though. I do, it, too. You get a nice little extra bit of something. You're like, oh, mm -hmm. sweet. I've got my little cool ability. You don't have that. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. That nice little bit And of these were very asymmetric. I mean, yes. not, not so much the diplomacy one, but the economy and the public opinion... In the first box, we each had different abilities. Yes. And I, I liked that. Yeah, that's nice. Um, so, yeah, very well done. Uh, overall, I, I think after I've played it, thought about it, we've talked about it, and now we're talking about it again, I, I like this game a lot more uh, and really want to play it again. Plus, it's a it's a good product. It's Man, it's a thick box. Yeah. Great counters. The map's gorgeous. The rules were pretty good. I thought they were fairly understandable. Yeah. Um, not any difficulties for me. There was a couple of vagaries. Yeah, in that a I couple was just. So we chatted through that, and we decided this is the way it is. Yeah, we made know? a decision on how to rule it, but a rule book should, should have that clarified. Yeah, especially when it's yeah a very I'm trying to remember what, rule book. what was the example. It was the one that we that we really talked about was uh, in the upkeep phase to do with the for your with the blockades. blockades. Yeah, and we decided this is what makes sense. Based on... I think, yeah. Yeah, we think. But it wasn't clear in the rule book. So, yeah, that that was one element that could have been better. Yes. Well, here's, here's what we'll do. Let me show you the board, and then we'll wrap up with a few final thoughts. Yep. So, here's a look at the map. And, as you can see, it's mostly just the uh, the eastern, or the east coast of the USA and Canada. Uh, and it's divided up into these... Typically large rural regions, but then there's also a series of um, towns or cities, which are the circular ones. Um, they're they're color coordinated, so the blue ones and the blue cities or towns, those are um, U.S. aligned home territories. The red ones are uh, British aligned home territories. The green ones are Indian home territories, and there's effectively like a, a neutral Spanish Florida. It's not neutral, but it, this is no one's home territory. It's just available for capture, basically. Um, Niagara and Fort Dearborn also kind of like a a, a, a gray, nothingy color. Those are neutral. They're not aligned with anyone, but you can capture these three regions to gain victory points. Anyone can do that. Uh, and in this one... The Indians, so the green uh, nation, uh, regions, are aligned with the British faction. So really it's a lot of rural area and a few towns are British aligned, and then a little bit of rural area, but a lot of towns and settlements are US aligned. Uh, what this does is it focuses a lot of fighting over here, uh, and then over in these regions it's a bit more of your um, skirmishing, raiding, that kind of stuff that's going to be going on. And that's because to score victory points in this one, you, you don't score what you hold as your home territories. You only score things that you um, occupy that are um, opposition home spaces. And what that does is it forces the game, uh, forces you to be aggressive in this game. You can't just sit on what you've got. You have to go and take other um, regions to get victory points. Uh, the other ways that you can get victory points in this one is with the uh, with the naval theater, which is a series of boxes on the edge here. Um, there's these blockade boxes. If the the British player is trying to fill each of these boxes with squadrons, once this is filled up, we go up. It says one blockade, two blockades, three blockades. We go up one in this space. If we're able to fill up a second blockade. We go up to two blockades. That's worth three victory points, even though it's two blockades. If we can get all the blockades up, that's worth five victory points to us. So if this is full and this and this, lots of victory points for us. Now, the US player can counteract that by privateering. And privateering is a special action that only they have, and it's a way for them to do piracy, to sneak around the blockades, all that kind of stuff. It's, it's some dice rolls, which they'll have to commit a bit to, to kind of get up there, and it's the net differences who's going to score the victory points on those. Uh, the other thing that the US player can do is they can do a cruise action, which is literally trying to knock off, it's again, it's some dice rolls to remove squadrons 
from from blockades that they're rolling against. That would then knock them down because now there's an incomplete blockade, so you can kind of swing that. That's another source of victory points. And the other real uh, major source of victory points uh, is uh, through diplomacy uh, on uh, on this public policy track. So there's public opinion, economy, and diplomacy. Um, on odd-numbered turns, you can move one of these boxes up one space. There are a couple of cards that affect those, uh, especially a couple in the prelude section of the game. But, generally speaking, these don't move all that often without you proactively doing that in those phases, so you can... It's, do I commit to, get to, to kind of getting some points ticking over, or do I get some really good enhancement abilities that will enhance my operations values and the cards that I play? There's some really nice choices here, but those are the main ways that you're going to score victory points. Um, and again, the the naval stuff and this is just kind of actions, th things that happen. Uh, the main, and the, if you can do some good offensives, you can score a lot of points on the board here. So, how do you do that? Well, this is a card-driven game. So you have your cards here. The other hand are these, typically seven, but you can get more if you go up on the diplomacy. Um... You can play for the ops value, so this is a three, a three, a two, I've only got twos and threes in my hand, you have one, they go up to four as well. So you can play for the ops value, that will allow you to take actions, or you can take uh, the the written text event on there, which uh, there, there's some there's some choices you got to make there. If, if I'm the British player and I play this, this is a US aligned event, this will go off regardless of whether I want it to or not. The only choice that I have is, do I, do I do my ops before or after the event goes off? That's the choice that I do have, and and I like that. It's a painful choice, but it, it's it's something interesting. So you're like, well, your event's going to go off. I'm going to wait till you do it, so I can then use my ops to mitigate what you've done. Or if it's not that bad, I can do whatever I want. Let's say I'm the British player and I just play my own event. Great. Uh, what I can do is I can remove all recruit tokens from Baltimore, Washington. Well, Baltimore, Washington doesn't have any because uh, they already recruited those, let's say. Uh, so let's say I use three points. What can I do with those? Well, I've got a whole sheet here. I can recruit myself, which is basically I, I remove a recruit counter from here and I add, if for one of my up points, a militia, or if I want to spend two of my up points, I could add a regular. If I spend two, I've got one up point left. What I cannot do is spend that on a different action. I have to do it on a recruit. So then I look at somewhere else, because I can't recruit in Kingston anymore, because I don't have any more of those recruit markers. So I look at Montreal, I've got a recruit marker, I'll spend that. I can't get a regular, because I've only got one point left. So I'm gonna do a militia there, boom. That's, that's recruiting, really nice and easy. Construction's very similar. Uh, you can either build a fort in a region that you control. Um, so let's say I control Hudson, boom. Even though Hudson is not a home space for me, I control it. I've got my guys there. I won a battle previously. I build a fort there. That gives me a defensive value when they try to retake it. Or you can build uh, forts anywhere uh, that, that you control, basically. The other thing that you can do is you can try to control the waterways. If you look here, there's a series of waterways up and down... Uh, the Great Lakes, and then into uh, St. Lawrence. Uh, and these are, this is a, look, quite an interesting little piece, because um, to build a waterway, let's say I've got three ops. I spend one to remove your one, and then I spend one to place my one, and then I spend one to remove your one. So it's quite expensive, and it's fairly slow going to do that, but this is really important, because now... If we do a battle here and I'm attacking, for example, if you control the waterways, which means I've got more of my control markers than you in, in this little waterway, I get a bonus die. And it also starts connecting these regions so that you can start moving through waterways as well. Uh, it's, it's some cards allow you to move along waterways, so if you control all of it, you can skip all the way down to Detroit on a boat. Things can get really nice. It doesn't happen all that often, but control of waterways can be... Uh, it, it can really change how so, some um, battles and, and affairs do go on, which I, I do appreciate that. Uh, the other actions that you can do are deploying. It's really easy for the British. 
you got all these naval squadrons, one point to deploy, one point to deploy. It's, it's very simple. You're just spending points and time to put guys out into the blockades. That's really all you're doing with those. You can do raids with the Indians. Um, basically what you do, let's say I've got a bunch of Indians in Shawnee. To raid, I spend my, point, my ops points and we move into Detroit. And then for every Indian that I have, I'm going to roll a dice. So let's say I've got, I've got five there. I'm going to roll five dice. On a five or a six, I score a victory point. So I'm going to score two victory points. Let's get, oh, here, yeah, I'm on like 17. <laughs> so you get two victory points. Let's go one, two. Great. The problem is, is that all of these guys are dead. They go off the board. They go home. They've done their raiding and plundering. They go home. Um, and I, I say that we, I, I never did it in our game because that's, very expensive. A one in three chance of getting something out of it. If there were enemies there, you'd have to fight them first, then whoever's left gets to do a raid. Uh, to me, the Indians are better used to doing other things. Now, if you were desperate in need of victory points, sure, maybe uh, if you're up against it, you could do that. But for me, uh, the Indians were much more powerful as harrying forces, picking off single militia units, um, and if you can get your British regulars down with them, they, you know, you now got a really strong force of guys that you didn't pay for because the Indians pop up from card play typically. So you don't have to invest time and ops in the same way, uh, to recruit these guys. They just kind of, they, they, they come up, uh, throughout the course of the game. So uh, the, the raiding, eh, I don't know. It, it, that's, it's too risky for me, uh, to do that. The other major part is campaigning, right? That's where the real core of this game is. So you do a campaign option. It costs one point to move guys from one space to another. And you can move any of the guys that are in a space into another space. What you can't do is you can't uh, start moving multiple spaces. It's just that's just how it is. So the first op we're going to do, simply we're going to move this stack out into this area here, boom. What that does is, is that's gonna give us one victory point at the end of the turn, right? We sit there, this is a fairly safe move because these guys in Boston can't somehow steal Montreal and move through. There's no way to do that. Always a good option. So then I've got these guys here. Well, I might move these guys to reinforce them. What I can't then do is move all these guys out into New York because this guy uh, already moved once. I could move these guys, but I can't bring this guy. They can't move multiple spaces on a card. Uh, attacking with three guys against three guys in a hometown, that's fairly risky because they'll get a defensive plus one die. It's maybe not the best thing in the whole... Oh, this is a regular. He shouldn't be on there. Give me a squadron. <laughs> um, so, so campaigning can be fairly difficult because... In, in a way, it's kind of a die smasher. Uh, what we, what I would do is I would do things like, whilst I've got these guys here, I might send a couple guys in here just to harry and harass these guys. If I can kill one, great. If not, yeah, it's not the end of the world because it was just two guys that I sent in. But basically, any time you move into an area, you resolve a combat. In this instance, let's say uh, these guys are defending, so they've got one for the fort and one dice each uh, for um, for each of the units. And then the Indians, we've got one dice each for each of them. And then we also have, because the Tecumseh event is active, we get plus one on attack. So let's do this. So we're going to get three dice each. We're just going to roll those. Oh, and that was a total disaster for the for the Indians, at least. So, the uh, militia, and these are two militia units, the militia are hit on a 5 or a 6. So, we don't score any hits. The Indian units are hit on a 4 or more. So, we do one hit. So, I'm going to lose a guy. He's dead. Then, what we can do is I have the option to retreat, or we can do another round of combat. Um, we'll just stick it out just to, just to show you, at least. So I've got one, oh, oops, I removed the wrong color die. I've got one fewer British die on this one. Oh, that was a disaster either way. Okay. 
So in this one, we did kill one militia, uh, but they totally wiped us out there. And that's how it ends up. So it was two to one, Indians against militia. That's probably what I would expect from that. It was a losing effort, but for them, for the uh, Americans to replace that militia, they'd have to recruit someone in Nashville and do um, ops to move them here and do another one to move them there. So getting reinforcements there is going to be fairly difficult. What I might do is, with my last ops point on that card, is move another guy in and we'll do another combat. So it's one, two blue dice, one, two for Tecumseh red dice. Oh, and it was a disaster again and I totally died. But if you're willing to play the dice in that way, <laughs> sometimes you can get some good rolls and you can just knock things out just by little harrying forces. When you start getting into these bigger combats with lots of regulars, uh, things can get fairly nasty. So let's say, for example, uh, these guys were already here. We'll just move, we'll march them into Boston and we'll do a big attack. So here we've got two, mil three militia and one British regular. And they're going in against two U.S. militia. So the U.S. militia get one die apiece. They also get one die for defending in a hometown. And they get plus one when defending in a home region because they're all the way up here with public opinion. You know, everyone's supporting them. Everyone's given them um, all the help that they need, maybe gun runners and things like that. I've got four units, nice and simple, so that's just a straight roll off. So we're going to roll the dice, and, oof, yuck, that's, my dice rolling is just horrible. So, the British will kill one U.S. militia. Great, he's gone. However, because the U.S. rolled a six, they can kill the regular. Regulars only die on a six. So that was fairly fortuitous roll for them. Both sides are going to lose one die. And then we're going to roll again. And, oh my gosh, this is terrible. So uh, the US knocked out two militia, because they hit on a five or a six. And the uh, British player did nothing. And then we're going to roll these dice. And we both kill each other to death. And that's what happens. And that's, that can happen, right, where you just wipe each other out. This is a home space for the US, so they keep control of it, there's just no one there. But I lost a whole bunch of guys, now I'm wide open. And so that, there's a lot of tactical play of, do I leave guys behind? How big of a force do I want to bring? Um, it's easier to defend in this game, but defending gets you no victory points. So you do have to go out and be aggressive. But that's, I mean, that's the core of combat. This is not a complicated game. You do get into a little bit of dice rolling. I will say, uh, they, they give you two dice of each color. And when you get into big combats, you'll need at least four or five of each. I think I, I, I dug out my own ones and we had like six dice. And some of the big battles we did use all, you know, six apiece. Um, so just know that if you've got if you've got extra dice, you'll probably want to use those. But the game is a game of ebb and flow. Uh, you'll see a lot of fighting here because these victory points are, are like one only one space between them. It's much harder for the British to come march down and take Nashville and New Orleans without doing um, naval landings, which you can do them. Um, they don't come up very often. Uh, if you've got guys in the landing supply box, you can naval land. If you have a full blockade, you can naval land uh, up to two units per boat, and you just kind of run in and do a naval landing. It's just a little modified combat. Um, but it's, it's, it's very... It's hard to do those, mostly because it's hard to get guys in the landing supply. They only come in through card effects. So getting guys in there to, to do it, you're probably at most, frankly, gonna get them uh, once or twice a game. It's hard to do any more than that. But well, if you can, it's very satisfying. And uh, you know, there are cards which give you special effects. So I had a full blockade here, and I, was, I had a card effect that was do a naval landing, um, if you've got this full blockade, you can just dump guys in Spanish Florida instead. 
So I landed a couple of guys here, two victory points for me. I was able to march up to Savannah, take Savannah, march into the Carolinas, um, after, you know, through some subsequent turns, and it was, it totally changed the game. And I think that's what this game is. You'll get a lot of fighting up here, absolutely, but some of some of the more outlandish flanking maneuvers and harrying and harassment, you know, if you can get if you can get U.S. militia units up around here. The pressure is on, and it forces you to do a lot of other things other than just fight over here, which is tempting to get bogged down into. Um, but that's that's most of the game. It looks beautiful, I will say that. Um, the cards are... Uh, I wish the cards had some pictures on them. I guess that's really the uh, the major complaint that I had on those. But the, the text is very clear on it, and was with the cards, it was almost nothing I wasn't very explicit. They're very clear and very well written. Uh, but the board is nice. Everything's a big space, very clear. I part of me wishes the cities were bigger, because between all your stacks of units and all of the recruit tokens, which uh, drip in over time, it can get a little bit crowded. But only because th these are so big, you got all this space. There's, there could have been maybe a better way to manage it. But it looks fantastic, and the the play is very simple, right? It's not complicated. You got your menu of things. Here's how to conduct a battle. Here's how to oh, here's how to, yeah on the side. Here's how to conduct a battle. Here's all the different bits and pieces that everything means to play. It's pretty good, uh, but that's it. It's uh, it's can I use my little benefits here enough to enhance what I'm doing on the board? Uh, so these choices are very important, but it's uh, you know it's a very um, not standard, but there'll be a lot of core concepts from other card-driven games that you'll be very familiar with of how to manage your hand, what to do, how to mitigate things that happen, and it's trying to conduct a campaign that's as successful as possible. So what we'll do is we'll wrap up here with a few final thoughts. So that was a look at the map. Um, it's very nice looking product. I, I think it's amazing. It's actually an amazing looking board. I liked it a lot. I would say... It's a very nice looking board. I, I liked it a lot. I love the relief. This I reminds do. me of Liberty or Death. I know. And they it did really such does. a nice with the relief and the coastal edges. But the lines. But I, the big white blocky lines. I'm like, yeah. what do you do that for? Well, and it's interesting because we talked about this too. Other War of 1812 games that we've played or seen, you know, 1812 from Academy, Academy Games, games yeah. has these same blocky lines. Yeah, I'm like, just... I guess in that one, it's all cubes anyway, but this yeah. one, I'm like, they've made a real effort for the background. Maybe they could have done, just, yeah. Just make the overlay just, not, just as nice as well. Yeah, it could have been... Some of the graphic design... That is I thought, the most nitpicky thing I've ever seen. I know. It's, it's still a really nice product. Yeah, I, I think <laughs> the, the, the graphic design on the cards was lacking a little bit. We were disappointed in the uh, in the emblems they used for the flags. They look like really cheap clip art. Yeah, I don't, there's no pictures on any of the it cards been, or anything. Should have been pictures. But the text is also big and bold, yep. so it's easy, easy to, to read. Use. So it's a yeah. toss-up, and that's the decision that they made. I, once again, I'm not sure that's a no. huge detractor. It plays well. It plays fairly quickly, I think, on your second and third play. Yeah. Three hours your first time, two to two and a half your second and third. Um, yeah, I... I, I I think the best part about this is they're so different each side that I could now play the British. Totally different. I'm going to have to totally spend different. the entire time trying to learn it, and then we could go back and play. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I really liked this. Um, I think I liked it more than I did when we started the game. Right. I think now I've I know what been like, oh, yeah, I think this is pretty nifty. Yeah, I, it was fun. I It's a CDG. So we, I like, we enjoy CDGs. I like that aspect of it. Yeah. But the resolution on the board wasn't hugely complicated. I no. feel like there are some games where I kind of get lost in yeah. what I'm trying to do. I felt like it was fairly, maybe not obvious, but like, I know what I'm trying to do in this. Yeah. And I approached it from that standpoint, and it was nice. Um, this, there is, a, I guess the only other thing I would say is a couple of typos on some of the cards. Well, and there's some typos on the player aid too. Yeah. Um, one time they meant to say your, and they said you. And I got there's a couple where it's like it's remove your recruit tokens, but it's recruit tokens. They yeah, like, got, yeah, yeah, just yeah. little bits and pieces like yeah. That. that was another thing we didn't even talk about. The way they make you recruit is very interesting. Yeah, I liked it. it it's an economy. You're gonna get one recruit token, I think, on every space that the beat, that can get one that yeah. can get one at the upkeep. So if it has its max, you're not gonna get one that turn. 
and you spend them. You spend them like currency. You use it along with op points to buy those units. I got an ability and I felt like it would be very important. Um, I didn't think it was important until late in the game. Yeah, that, that definitely came out late. Late, game. late in the game. I, I enjoyed that that mechanic. I thought that was very well done. It also that that neat was neat because it also I felt like it it almost incentivized you to raise troops and parts of the board that you normally maybe wouldn't. Yeah, it would be very easy if that wasn't a mechanic. All you would do is do Boston and New York. Yeah, just blitz, I would blitz, have blitz. not worried about down here. It gives you an yep. incentive to kind of muck around down here, yep. and I think that's nice. I, it I, is. I appreciate little bits and pieces like that. Yeah, that that make that help you to to use the whole game. Yeah. and the whole board. I think that's a really it, insightful it, comment. And very I easy like to it. get bogged down here. Yeah. Yeah, we could have fought here just like every time. Well, yeah. Every time. I, a lot of games that are set in this period, yeah, that, that's, that's what, what we do. Yeah, it's, it's like the same three or four territories. Here, I felt like we spread it out. Yeah, there was a I, lot we, of fighting. We still had a lot of focus here. But there was but, a lot of fighting around Nashville. Oh, there was, yeah. In Savannah and Savannah. Yep. Cumberland, Florida. Carolinas. That's, yep. that's great. I yep. loved doing that. I would have liked to have seen a siege mechanic or siege element because we know... With these big forts, that that's part of it. Now, I don't know that there was a lot of sieges in in now French and Indian. There was French and Indian War. There was yeah. But I, I you know Fort Detroit. I've always thought it was just a huge, and it's like there. It's like nothing really happened. So maybe there would have been a siege mechanic or yeah. But I always feel like that relevant. stuff slows games. Down. It does. And this this one they've you know. It's been streamlined, so it's you play it in two, yeah, two and a bit hours. Call it good. I, I retract that comment. I, maybe maybe yeah, it's not I needed. I, I like this game quite a bit. Yes, it, actually, I had a good time with it. How many eighteen twelve games have we played? Two now. This is our second. We have another one we'd like to play. Yeah. War along the Great Lakes, it, but it, but it was it was enjoyable. Yeah, I had a good time with this particular one. Nice little CDG. Nice little two player game. Yes. Uh, and, I and, agree. and I again, I would say anyone could anyone could play this if they really want to. No question. The rule book is the actual rules are at best 15, best. 20 pages. Four, yeah, fourteen pages. Fourteen pages. Yeah. I mean, and the text is actually really big. You know, yeah, pictures. Right. So Lots of examples. It's too. easy to learn. You could play this with almost anyone. Yeah. Well, and the player aid's pretty good too. I mean, it it describes yeah. all the actions you have. I just uh, yeah, pretty good. If there was a little sequence of play on there, that it would have, would have made it better. For me. Yeah, but yeah, put it, put it on the board. Just put it on the board. Mm, it's it's what it is. Yeah. But I had a good time with it nonetheless. The game is enjoyable. I would recommend this to someone to play. So this is now the second CDG we've played in the last like four months from Compass. Mm -hmm. We played Prelude to Rebellion. Yes, and this one. I think they both are well done. They yes. both are different enough that. I think they both could fit on your shelf. This is a war game, right? I'm yeah, moving, this is I'm more of a war counters, game. Yep. We're rolling dice in combat. That one's more of an influence. Yeah, there's not fighting. It's you're fighting over votes, and this is more of a war game. But I, but I like both of those. I mean, yes. I, I think they fit on your shelf and will will occupy a nice a nice place. Yes, because it's eighteen twelve history. So, so dawn's early light from Compass Games. Thumbs up for me. I enjoyed this. One question I was going to ask you. What does Dawn's early light refer to? Do you know? Yes, I do. You're an American now. I swear I knew the answer to that. Uh, has to do with... It has to do with the national anthem yes. that was written during this, or as a result of one of the battles yeah. in this yeah. war. Francis Scott Key wrote it. Yes. I don't know which battle, though. Maybe okay. I should know that. Well, do you know? I do. Well, I don't. No, no I'm, I'm not going to tell you. you. I want you to research. It wasn't on the citizenship exam. It wasn't? No, that, I mean, I, that, I don't think so, no. Okay. There was a lot of questions on that exam, but they only ask you ten of them. Got it. <laughs> so I okay. Pro it probably enough, wasn't that book, but I don't I don't think it, it would have been on there. That's, I don't think it would have been on there. There's some stuff yeah. on there. Okay. Look it up. It's, one of, it's, in, it's on the East Coast. One of the questions was, when was the War of 1812? <laughs> <laughs> was that really one of them? No! <laughs> I, I've never taken the citizen test. So. <laughs> anyway, look it up. Um, anyway, very cool. I wonder I, if it was this battle that's not pictured on the front. Presume? Maybe? No, no, it's not. Well, I, I, okay. I'm not going to tell you. You're going to have to look it up. I feel like it's one something that I've known before, yeah. but I don't. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> this is a game review. Write it in the comments for Alexander. <laughs> Write it in the comments for Alexander. 
Uh, Not a history lesson. It's a game review. Yeah, I, I enjoyed this. Yes. I Enough did. said. Good. Good yes. game. Good game. Liked it. Appreciate you guys tuning in. I'm Alexander from theplayersaid.com. And I'm Grant.